Hi guys, this is my channel about home brewing and today we're doing episode number uh, 7 of the Hops Grow in My Garden 2018 and today is harvesting time. So we're going to start with some mobile footage so we can come really close and uh, have a look at what are the four different varieties, how they are doing. And then it's, as I said in the intro, harvesting time. Finally, I should have harvested a little earlier, uh, but uh, yeah, life happens. Uh, things got in the way, of course, brewing and uh, raining and yeah, my mother went to the hospital. But today we will harvest the first plant, the uh, Mauritz 85. But as I said, let's have a look at all the plants and then let's uh, harvest. Okay, let's have a look at the Magnum. Close cam. And don't know if you can see it, but there are actually some cones there. High up, small one. Cool. And uh, yeah, most of it's over now. Some cucumbers there. Over to the uh, Mauritz, and uh, yeah, it's uh, harvesting time. Should have harvested for a few days ago, but um, I didn't. Life got in the way. So, see, some of them are even over, but most of them are fine. Let's check the plant. Doesn't look so good down here. Ah, this ain't a problem, but there's a lot of cones up there. Let's take it from the other side as well. It's a lot of big cones now. The small one, not all of them, but uh, yeah. A lot of them has grown. And uh, the Costa hops. Same here. They're ready. You can listen to it. Should have maybe harvested them as well. Quite a a lot of cones, not a massive plant like the Halletar Mittelfrau. You can see it goes up into that pine tree as well. And the Svalöf S. We have cones from like two meters and up. We have a lot of cones. Yeah, and uh, they could be ready for harvest as well. Let's go uh, and have a look at the Halleta Mittelfrau. Okay, the big one starting to get a lot of cones. This is uh, huge amount of cones on this big one but they are quite small yet so uh, still hoping that they will uh, continue to grow so far so good there's cones everywhere I'll take you below as well see we have cones growing like all over the place let's uh, go down there okay, 
there's, there's cones everywhere, as I said. And some there. And uh, yeah, down below here, see cones. Should have a like a cone counter on this video to see how many times I said cones. One cone there as well. Yeah, and uh, it actually has stopped growing now. I think so it's just concentrating on the cones. We have a whole roof here. Yeah, so I will let them sit for longer. These are not ready to be picked. They are too fresh. You want that like papery focus. Yeah, you want like a papery sound. And these are too wet to be picked. So we've been picking the hops in this 15 liter bucket. Also a uh, garden scissor if we need it. And hops is sticky, so uh, some plastic gloves. Well, some of them I can pick just from the wine, and then I have to lower it. But I guess just a matter of starting picking the hops. Uh, don't think I will force you to uh, see it all. There's some of the hop cones starting to get a little brownish. Not much. Uh, there were one, I think, which were very brown, so I threw that one away. But the rest of them looks quite good. <sighs> it doesn't smell amazing, really. You really hope that they kind of would. You see that? Smell maybe some vegetable spiciness, not like uh, tropical fruits or something like that. Ah, gotta leave there. So, uh, how do you know when your hops are ready? Look at this. They sound really papery and yeah, they doesn't spring back as good as when they are fresh. And uh, they're full with lupulin. It's the jello stuff, which you want. Woo. This is uh, hard work, picking hops. And I haven't found a faster method of doing it than to pick them one by one. But try to get more. I get a lot of leaves and sticks. So I think this is the way to do it. How do you pick your hops? Have you any suggestions? Please comment down below if there's a better way to do it than this. Of course I will lower it. I could have cut down it all but uh, yeah I think I will pick what I can from the wine and uh, this hop I actually can lower, so uh, I can pick it standing. Otherwise, I could have cut a whole the uh, hop plant down and uh, brought it somewhere else where I would like to pick them. But I think this will work for this hop session. It's gonna be another issue, another way that I have to pick the other plants. Just lost some there. Okay, it's getting harder to reach now, so we're gonna lower it. And uh, it ain't gonna be that hard, I guess, on this plant. 
hasn't grown as tall as the rest. So we just lower it and make another knot. And let's start picking again. Almost done now. So, some fuses left to pick, and uh, after they're picked, I'm gonna cut the whole bush down. Uh, I'm gonna need to buy some hay. I want to put some hay over the hop plants. Yeah. The hop plants left after I cut it down, that is. So I'm just gonna pick the rest of them now. And we can cut the bush, can we call it bush? Cut the hop plant down and of course measure up the hops. And uh, I'm gonna dry this because I ain't brewing today it's uh, nearly seven o'clock in the evening or even more so it won't be brewing today so this will get dried and vacuum packed and then straight into the freezer and hopefully can get round to pick the Korsta plant tomorrow and uh, the Swal of S the day after that. And as you saw, the uh, Haltetau Mittelfrau, the big one, Haltetau Mittelfru, I think it's the more of a right pronunciation. Pronunciation, yeah. Uh, and uh, the magnum, Let's see if we can get any cones from it. We have some cones forming, but they're very young. And if we get some, I don't think it will be more than 20, maybe. But still, it's hop cones. So if there will be cones, I will pick them and I will use them and I will fill them, fill them, I will film them, sorry. So I'm just gonna pick the rest, okay? Hops are picked. Oh, it's scissor time. Try to see if I can cut them off the rope instead. I will save some rope for next year. And uh, yeah, maybe this doesn't make for a good uh, video material. A material, a material girl. So I will continue this off camera, but it has to be done. Even if it's boring. Yeah. So I cut the wines down to the ground. So I'm gonna buy some hay to cover it all up, to protect it over the winter. And uh, yeah, have just, what is to the five liter, five and a half liter mark, maybe some more hop cones. I'm gonna weigh it and see. Lost one, two. Okay, better stop playing. Let's measure it, weigh it. Or try to remember to put this in ounces as well. 776. Um, so we have, if we deduct the bucket, 344. That should be... Uh, Mm, we'll have to calculate it. 
what can it be like 12 ounces something like that i've learned that an ounce is uh, about 28 grams have some sticks in here as well but uh, hope it's not too much oh, i picked up the wrong piece there some sticks and some leaves but uh, yes that's the way it has to be so it's drying time i wanted to say that the, the smell is awesome but it's really not it's more like green some uh, spiciness maybe something like that so i got this food dehydrator which i think is very good to use um, never tried it with hops but i tried it with spices and it works good tried it with uh, beef jerky so we have one two three four five tiers and uh, you can set the temperature here as well i want to do 35 degrees celsius i think that's about uh, 90 fahrenheit you really want to go cold when you uh, dry uh, spices so i think we will have the same approach here so we're gonna start by filling up the tears with hops not in the middle okay first tier and uh, as you dry things uh, will shrink and more air will circulate between them lost two but we don't have to pack this very much because it ain't so much hops really so after drying how much will it weigh and you start to think that uh, maybe hop prices aren't that overpriced after all but this was the first year with the Maurits plants and uh, hopefully next year or the years to come will uh, give a lot of more hops if it's good that is so i'm just gonna fill up the tiers now and then gonna start it at 35 c and uh, hopefully tomorrow morning this will be dry so we can put this in a bag and vacuum it and uh, yeah i'm gonna flip the tears so uh, the lower ones get lowered last tier i think this will be a good method but uh, i don't think it can handle a lot of hops if you get a lot of hops you have to invent something but for this amount it seems to be quite good okay so put the lid on and start the dehydrator okay guys next morning be like 10 hours since we uh, saw each other the last time it's early in the morning um, and uh, the hops are dry totally like uh, you know like you know restaurant paper the uh, the one who sucks which you can't uh, actually use they served uh, hot dogs in those 
Not anymore, I think. <clears throat> cool. Okay, so the yield wasn't very big before drying. So uh, we had uh, 344 grams of hops. And uh, I, best we have, I bet we have lost a lot of weight, of course, during the drying stage. So, all cones get in. This is the first year from this plant, so uh, I'm betting we will have more. We're actually two plants, but I'm betting that we will have more next year and the year after if there's a good summer. This summer was extremely hot by not only Swedish measurements, but it was. Okay, so all of the hops are in now. And we have, oh my God. It's only 75 grams of hops. And that's a, a whole, uh, not a whole, that's a bucket up to six liters over six liters 75 grams of hops um, I put a lot of uh, work in uh, to uh, these hops and all I got was 75 grams I guess I should be happy just to have anything in the first year so um, so this will all go into one beer of course But I will not brew today either, so um, oh, 75 grams, even less, 74.7 to be exact. So I'm um, going to put that in ounces more exactly, but uh, that's like 3 ounces. Less than three ounces, actually. So, as I'm not brewing today, I'm gonna vacuum pack the hops and put them into the freezer. Start up by sealing like this bag on a roll, then you can decide how long bags you want. So we seal that side. And uh, I don't know if I can fit them in one bag, but I'm going for a little longer bag. I will try. You know, if you uh, buy hops here in, in Sweden for home brewers, they are uh, 100 grams in each. So uh, we just can get them in here. We should be fine. They take a lot of space. Listen to that sound. That's dry hops. They still have... What do they call it? Like a spicy note?
Don't think I can fit everything into one bag. Actually. So we're gonna take two bags instead. Fit some more in this one. They take a lot of room, but the vacuum should help that. I'm gonna do the next one from a better view, I promise. So I should have used a bigger bag to fit them all, but uh, I didn't. I'm gonna double seal that end. That's bag number one, waste nothing. Let's do the other bag, let's make a seal. That side is sealed. Let's put our hops in. I did not uh, measure the bag because uh, I'm going to use all of this into one beer. Otherwise, I would have measured the bag and then after measured the bag with the hops and deduct the weight of the bag. But as we're going to use all of the hops into one brew, there's some escaping, some leaves. Okay, so a little less in bag two. So this bag was a little too long. It will work anyway, just a waste of bag. Okay, it's vacuumed and make a double seal. With a double seal, you see it there, I make two seals. If anything has stuck between the first one, the other one, it's, yeah, it's just a protection. You get it. It's not rocket science. So, double seal. So guys, 75 grams of Maurits hops. This will go into one beers. I won't cheer you off today because it's early in the morning. Instead, we will cut till tonight uh, when we can taste 
this beer here uh, straight out of the fermenter it's cold crashing now sitting at uh, 11.6 degrees celsius so by tonight it will be cooled down it should be carbonated i had a little leak the fermenter source on this one a little gas leak on top but it has maintained pressure all of the time so maybe not super carved but it should be carved it sitting at like a one and a half between one and one and a half bar i usually uh, ferment a lot of uh, with a lot of more pressure if you follow my channel you know that i have a playlist on um, ferment source and uh, yeah many of my grain to glass videos you will see the ferment source and fermenting under pressure but i'll put a link up to uh, both of them or down so but let's cut to tonight Okay guys, back again, uh, the uh, hydrator is running again, so it's not the day after, it's actually two days after, because uh, something happened, I did do the end video yesterday, but I wanted to redo it, yeah, let me shut that off, so this is the next hop plant, I'm recording a video from that as well, so that's coming up maybe not as a next video but that's coming up so this is what happened i recorded the uh, harvesting video of the maurits hops on uh, thursday and on friday as yesterday i did the ending video for that but i did pick up some uh, store-bought beers on friday because it's fun to uh, try some like uh, in Swedish we say small goodies but yeah I picked up some beers and one of the beers actually tasted very similar to the smell of the Maurits hops so I wanted to redo it I wanted to reshoot the video so we could try the beer and um, yeah if you are in Sweden because the beer is from a Swedish brewery so if you are in Sweden you could go and pick it up at Systembolaget the only shop in Sweden which is allowed to sell beers over 3.5 percent wine ciders spirits yeah liquors all of it and it's of course run by the government But, I also promised you that we were going to try the beer straight out of the Fermentosaurus. So this means that it's day 6. It has been cold crashing for uh, 2 days. I tried it yesterday on camera, but I'm going to redo that. I could take the footage from that, but I won't. Let's try it again. I think I mentioned in the last video that I had a little issue this time. I had a little leak, so it's haven't hold any more uh, pressure than one and a half bars. I usually, um, which you know if you follow my channel, I usually uh, pressurize it more, 2.4 bars even, over two bars. So maybe it's not as uh, carbonated as my beers usually are straight out of the fermenter i'm gonna keg it so it's not really an issue but uh, yeah let's see so this is a lager it's an uh, oktoberfest beer it's supposed to be an oktoberfest beer so it's not about the hops it's about the malt so what can we expect uh, maltiness of course uh, maybe some sweetness I think the sweetness you get the malty sweetness reminds me a little bit of uh, when uh, you say an Oktoberfest the sweetness you get in a like a, uh, the sweetness in Oktoberfest to me reminds me a little bit 
about that sweetness you find in like a Fuller's ESB, you know what I'm talking about? It's almost like a diacetyl sweetness to it. Like a, yeah, caramel. Uh, yeah, let's just pour it and see what it is. It, it might be an Oktoberfest. It might not be carved at all. So it's not storming out here. So don't expect this to be good looking. And it's very, very cold. It's uh, just over 0.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's not that carbonated. It has carbonation. Maybe it's just also the it's very cold. So it's not very good looking. I will find this beer with the gelatin later. You don't have to find it with gelatin. Just let it sit longer and, and beer will clear up. But I will find it. So it's not as dark as you see it there. And uh, yeah, I will do a grain to glass video of this so you will get a better view of it. But Now this is a green beer, of course, just six days in the making. So it's quite cold, so it's not the, uh, the best temperature to be tasting beers, but it's not about the beers really. And it's not about these hops, it's about the uh, Moritz hops. So, but I promise you that. So let's just go through that, crack open the other beer and see if It still reminds me of the hops like yesterday. Maybe, maybe it was a mistake to reshoot this. Cheers. Let's try this one. Yeah, it's very malty. It has that uh, like a uh, caramel sweetness that we're talking about. some bitterness to it as well. Um, this is supposed to uh, condition for a while so that will go down. There is carbonation. I uh, want more carbonation but so I will uh, put some pressure on the keg so we will get more carbonation but it's a clean fermenting beer it has sweetness some fruitness a lot of malt and a little hop bitterness I don't know if you can see the carbonation but there is carbonation yeah you can It needs more carbonation to carry ahead. Okay, let's put that to aside and um, go for the other beer. So the beers I'm going to try is this Electric Nurse Pale Ale. It comes in at 4.6%. So this is store-bought beer on my home brewing channel. It has happened before. It will happen again if I think it's relevant. Contains water, barley, hops and yeast. This is unfiltered. Electric nurse. If um, you can get it, go and get it. And uh, yeah, I will wait for you. Just come back to this video. I guess it's better. Let's see if we find anything. I think imported to the New Zealand by Gothenburg. So I don't know if maybe you can get this uh, abroad at New Zealand, something like that. They used American hops. 
and it's brewed with pilsner malt and just some small amount of caramel malt. Okay, let's get this one into a glass and see if it still reminds me of the smell of the Mars hops from the picking and from the morning when I come in here and all, all the hop shed were smelling like, like the Maurits hops. Let's get this one into a glass. Hope this glass ain't that dirty. You can take the time to wash it like I do when I do a beer review for a beer mail. Okay, so it's uh, not perfectly clear. A little bit hazy. Not, not hazy in that way. It's not a New England IPA, something like that. Well, it's a good looking beer with a tight white head. It has a, yeah, a little bit darker than straw color. Not that red as you see it, but still looking good on the camera there. Okay, let's give that a nose. The one I got yesterday was more hoppy. I actually bought one today. I went and buy one because, uh, yeah, I wanted to do this. So it, this is not super fragrant. The other one was uh, super, but more fragrant. I'm just going to dive in. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. If you stayed this long, sorry for putting out so long videos. This one doesn't taste like that, like the one I had yesterday. So I think I have to pick up uh, more than from other places around to see, if I, I, to see if I can get one who tastes like that. So I completely destroyed this video, guys. So sorry, but uh, yeah, keeping it real. This is a quite nice brew. Not, nothing special. A little bit flat. I guess this one fresh from the keg would be much better than sitting in a bottle at Systembolaget. And yeah, the one I got yesterday was much fresher than this one. So I don't know what to say, guys. Sorry for taking your time. But yeah, the Oktoberfest I think it will be good. Now you see when starting to heat up, it actually carries a little bit of head there. So looking good, more carbonation and a little bit more time. Gonna fine it so it gets perfectly clean. That's one. It's, uh, it's meant for a party, so uh, has to look good for people who don't uh, drink beers like we do. <sighs> has to look good. Has to look good to their eyes with their opinions. Yeah, I really got myself stuck in a corner there. So I'm rambling again as usual. So Cheers guys, thanks so much for watching. Gonna turn this on again. We'll be back to uh, look at that, hops. But thanks for today, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you want to be more content, recipes and uh, more updates, check out my Patreon page and of course all of the other videos. So cheers guys and thanks for watching. Dr. Hans out.